So I'm back. So in this movie, these people, I, I don't know where, I don't remember or know where this, this disease came from. They said it was a disease and I don't know who first had it or what have you. But anyway, people were turning into zombies when they, if somebody bites them and they die, they would come back. But later on, I understand that instead of being bit and then dying and come back as a zombie, if you die, period, for any reason, you come back as a, a zombie. And so what that sounds like is, is like uh, the people, it sounds like the, the disease, instead of just coming from people that's, that's biting other people, now the disease is so saturated in the earth and so many people have died uh in in whatever they did to get this to get this disease in the atmosphere now it's people breathing this disease so if they die they become the zombie well i'm looking at it like this today you can try not to be a hater but if you don't watch and walk in the spirit, you will be hating just like the haters. And see, here's the thing. One of the plans of the haters, people that hate, is to get you to hate. One of the things that the hater will do because he has been moved and given a strategy by Satan, he will encourage you and entice you to hate before you know it that's why the scripture let us know that we should walk in the spirit that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh the lust of the flesh is whatever that makes us feel good and sometimes hating makes us feel good excuse me <coughs> Ooh, i'm having trouble today satan don't want this message to come for but i'm coming anyway so we have a situation here where the pressure is on us to hate. The pressure is on us to lose our temper. The pressure is on us to emotionally respond instead of intelligently react. It's a shame that some of us will yield ourselves to hatred. But I'm telling you now, you can't make it to glory. You can't make it with God. You can't make it down here in this world and be moved and governed and directed by hate. It will destroy you. Hate is like a cancer. It will eat you up. It will destroy your insides. It will destroy your mind. It will be, have you looking at people in certain ways that you shouldn't even be looking at them. Listen, I know preachers, a lot of times preachers, they will preach hard. And as it, it has its place. Sometimes you have to go hard. But there are so many people, there are so many preachers that go hard, so tough, and so mean that the people don't want to be around them. The people don't want to come to their church. The people don't want to come hear no word. Why? Because this man sound like he hate us. I remember back in the day when I first got saved, there was a preacher out there calling people bubble eye. You a bubble eyed fool. And Talk about gay people, them bull dikers and them dykes and you know all that. That sounds like hate speech. God didn't say do that. He said, with love and kindness has I drawn you. Like I said, you know, it's not, it's not always peaches and creams and the, the gospel is not violins and, 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 and Luther Vandross, but... You got to not come off like you hate these people because what you do is they will turn around and hate you. And they will stop people from coming around you. They will scandalize your name and lie on you and all types of things. We got to know how to treat people as saints. We can't do things that promote and provoke hate. We can't do that. Listen, this thing is big. I, could, I probably could talk on this for a week. Hate is killing the saints hate is killing people on the street and it's time to walk away from that listen the scripture said to this in ephesians 1 and 1 
He said, and you have he quickened. Quickened means to be brought to life. And ye have he, ki he quickened who was dead in trespass and sin. I was dead in trespassing and sin. I was dead. I was smack dab dead in it. Walking around like the walking dead. My spirit was not alive. Because anything separated from God is not alive. It's just existing. But man, to get hooked up with God and to get God's spirit and to walk in his love is powerful. But in you, talking about me, and you, if you're living for God, and you have he quickened who was dead from trespassing and sin. The moment you repented, you were quickened from dead. From, from trespasses and sin. You were not perfect, but you was perfectly saved. The unrighteousness that you did, it got wiped away as soon as you repented. So the last thing we need to do is go back into hate. The last thing we need to do is go back to what the scripture calls in Galatians, the weak and beggarly elements. It's weak to hate somebody. It's cowardice to hurt, hate somebody. It's unmanly and it's unwomanly, but it's unmanly for sure to hate. Because that means that person has your number. That means that person is living, as they call, rent-free in your head. It said here, once again, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Let me tell you something. There's people that will hate you, and whatever they hate you for, you have gone past in your life. You have repented to God. You are living for God. And whatever it is these people have against you, they are stuck in your past. They're stuck in what you used to be and used to do, but you are not because you have repented. Listen, nobody, nobody can, I said this before about the song, no man can put no finger on me. Listen, I'm not a perfect person. I've messed up. I've offended people. I did all types of stuff. One thing I do, I'm going to repent. I, I'm going to ask God to forgive me. And there's people that hold grudges. They're holding grudges against people then already took it to God and repented and living their life. So they over there about to go to hell hating. And this person is on his way to glory. Now there's some people that need to talk to each other and get some things straight. But for a lot of people, hatred won't have that happen. Because when people come to each other, they come with disrespect and they want to be right. And they don't care what, there's no reason together because I want to be right. And you have to be wrong. So what are we going to reason together about? But it's the will of God that people reason together. But there's some things don't take reasoning together. It takes leave that alone. I forgive that person. I hope they forgive me and let us go on. Because you don't have to be, you don't have to be best friends with nobody. You don't have to be best friends with a person. So you go on and do what you're going to do. Now, here's the thing. He said, where in, I got to read it again because I, I, like I like to come from where I'm coming from and break it down. He said, you had the quicken who was dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And let me read further and then come back. Among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and the mind, and were by, by nature the children of wrath as others. By nature we were the children of wrath. I know I was. I didn't want to be. But if somebody did something to me, I was coming. 
That's how we were raised. We were children of wrath. People that are not saved right now, they are children of wrath. Not only do they have wrath in them, but the wrath of God abides over them. And the devil would love to catch somebody off guard and make them do something stupid that they'll regret for the rest of their life through hate. He said, among whom we all had our conversations in the past, lust. When it says our conversation, that word is twofold. We had a conversation as the way we talk, and then we had conversation the way we communicate, uh, uh, the way we carried ourselves, the way we behaved ourselves. So it's talking and actions. That was based on our lust. And the lust was to be to, to, to do things like the world do. And one of the things that they do is to promote and also to uh, purvey violence, just like their father, the devil. And so with that being said, we got people that are lost in hate. You got people in other countries. There's people that's against this country and then there's other people against themselves. Uh, there, there's other company, there's other countries that's against other countries. That's why the scripture says, when the last days shall come, you will hear of wars and rumors of war. That's happening right now. Some wars I heard about, but I haven't seen anything, but I've seen the, I've heard the rumor. And then there's straight up wars going on while I'm sitting here at this computer. There's war going on. Then the political parties. There's hatred in the political parties. Now, some Democrats don't hate Republicans, and some Republicans don't hate Democrats. Somebody say it's uh, uh, two wings on one bird. And I believe that because have you ever noticed that no matter who's in office, people that's at a certain level in life, they never come up. And that's been going on since politics been been going on. They never come up. There was a time back in the 70s and, and, and before then, a little space in there where people was doing good. But somewhere around the, the 80s or, or the beginning of the 80s, things the bottom just fell out of everything. But the problem is, one of the problems is, people really do not love the country. The word they call patriot means you love the country. No, you love the people that's, that's your color. You love the people of your uh, party. You love the people of your political persuasion. You don't love the country. So you're not really, you're not really patriotic as in loving the country. You love your folks. And you hate other people. Some of that is going on. They up there doing, they, they splitting the money, they laughing, some of them laughing all the way to the banks. But the people down here where I'm at and where some of you are, they hating people because they Republican or they hating people because they're Democrats. And God does not want us to hate anybody. And so you got to watch yourself with that stuff. We got racism, which we just talked about a little bit that a little bit of that in politics. You cannot talk. You cannot talk about racism unless you talk about politics or you can't talk about politics unless you talk about racism it's going to be in there somewhere and when you talk about it and then when you look at the news and when you look at certain things that are transpiring in the land you will know that all of that stuff is generated and pushed forward and purveyed by satan the chief purveyor of hate it's all about hate gangs People gangs. I don't know how much they gang banging now, but I remember when I was coming up, it was an ugly situation. All about a street corner. Or all about three or four blocks. All about them four corners where I was where I grew up at. All about that. And people died because they hated that somebody was walking on the side of the street. People died, and it was so it was so crazy that some of those people would play basketball together during the day, and then come out at night and shoot at each other. 
gang banging. People are hating through social media. We talked about that. Yeah, they're getting likes and views and subscribers, but they spread and hate. Because if they can get you to hate this one over here, then they're going to go over there. You're going to go over there and see what this person is saying and what they're doing and why this person hate them. So you can hate them too. Hey, hey, hey. Destroying this world. Destroying this country. Destroying the black culture. Just as well as other cultures. Parents and children. I was on TikTok about a year ago and this lady was talking so bad about her parents. And I'm thinking to myself, I understand that because I had some situation happen with my parents. But when you look back at what they're dealing with, a lot of times they couldn't do any better. Because they didn't know any better. We didn't have Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Spock. and uh, Well, we had Dr. Spock, but Dr. whatever his name is. We didn't have all these people. We didn't have Les Brown and T.D. Jakes and all these people that's dealing with all this mental stuff and all this motivational stuff. We didn't have none of that. Only thing they had was what they knew. And they did the best they could. But you hate them. You don't have to like what they did. And you don't have to go sit around and be with them all the time. But you hate them. Come on now. Whole families are hating each other. People are breaking up. Families are splitting because of hate. Because of hate. Women are against men and men are against women. Why? Because of hate. Because of hate. No love. And this thing, oh, this is a whole nother story. This whole nother story. This thing about women against men and men and against women, you can name anything that you want to to say that is wrong with a lot of men. And you know what? You'll be right. But also, you can say a lot of things about women, and you will be right. If you go in the scripture, the scripture will tell you what's in man and what's in women. The scripture give you warnings about how to deal with a man and how to deal with a woman and how to stay out of trouble. But instead, people don't look at that, and they do whatever they want to do, and they end up, as my friend that's, that, that's left us, he said their relationship becomes a battleship. Why? Because they went into it. They went into it with the with the question, "What do you bring to the table?" Now, some of you think, "Oh, that's a valid question," but that means that I that that don't sound like a person that's willing to that's looking to give something. That sound like a person that's willing to get something. And if both people coming in to get and not willing to give, that relationship ain't gonna last. And what should anybody want to give in a relationship where they're going to be together, hopefully, the rest of their life? They're going to have to give love and respect. I got a situation going on in my family right now. My, my oldest brother had a medical situation, and his wife is right with him by his side. Money ain't got nothing to do with it. Clout don't have anything to do with it. Position don't have anything to do with it. She's with him until... The end. That's what you bring to the table if you really want to know. That's when, when the money runs out or the money don't count because you can get so sick the money don't count. The money don't mean nothing. You can get so sick that money won't do you nothing to you. But to, to be in a position and you got somebody that loved you all these years and then they still with you to the end. But some of you would rather hate. Some couple, some couples would rather hate on each other. People in the church, people talking about church hurt. Listen, let me tell you a secret about church hurt. If you end up not saved, if you end up not delivered, if you end up losing out with God because of something that happened in the church, that was Satan's plan all the time. It worked perfectly. Because you can forgive them people and you don't have to go back. And if they did something wrong you or they did something in a fashion that wasn't good, then you know wherever you're going, don't do that no more. Or don't do that. Don't, don't incorporate that in your life. But to hate somebody because of something that happened 30 years ago? Come on now. These people done repented 
and trying to get to God. And you still stuck. And you not saved. Satan did it. He got you. Listen, this thing about revenge, I got to pay you back. I got to get you back. God said, vengeance is mine. We have no business going up in God's hand and taking something out of his hand just because it was us. But see, that's a faith walk. That's a faith move. That's a faith thing. If you do something to me, I believe God is going to do what is right concerning you. So I don't have to get into it. I don't have to, to fight you. I don't have to come looking for you with guns. I don't have to get on Facebook and, and, and slander your name or YouTube and try to destroy you. I don't have to do that. God got that. When you don't have any faith and you want to stick your nose in it, then you putting yourself in the way to have trouble with God. I don't care what nobody's doing. I'm not trying to, I ain't monitoring people, trying to find out what they're doing so I can have something to say. I'm praying for people. I'm praying that people be saved. I'm praying that people get delivered. I'm praying for people to get right with God. That's all that really matters. Some people don't understand. That's all that really, all that garbage, it don't matter. If it's going to keep you out of heaven or out of wherever God is right now. If that's going to keep you separated from them, why would you take a chance on that to hate somebody else? I'm sitting here today, I'm telling you, I don't hate anybody. Right now, I'm not even upset with anybody. Because the scripture said, give no place to the flesh and give no place to the enemy. Don't give any place to anything. Listen, he said some of this stuff should not be named once among the believers. Listen, I want people to be saved because I want to be saved. And I'm known by quite a few people. And some people don't know me. So this doesn't apply to the ones that don't know me. But if you, whoever you are, you think that I did something to you, that you got to hate me for, listen, I'm sorry. I apologize. If there's anybody out there, this ain't directed at one person. Anybody. Charge it to my head and not my heart. I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to blow it. I don't want things to get away from you because your heart was poisoned. It says here, as we go on, Matthew 22, 37 and 40. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Once again, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. It's going to take God to do that. Because some of us, we just got through finding out we don't, we don't really understand our souls. We don't understand our spirits. And we don't understand sometimes our mind. So we should be asking, Lord, bring me to a place where I can love you with my heart, my soul, and my mind. Bring me to that place. I'm not there yet. I've been saved since 1982. I ain't there yet, but I'm striving. And one thing I know, people have not been able to get me to hate them. And I feel good. I Listen, to be walking around with hate and all that type of stuff, it's got to be uncomfortable. It's got to be like, man, you know why? I don't know why, why a person would want to do that. To walk around with hate. And so. He said going further. This is the first great commandment. He said and the second. Is like unto it. That thou love thy neighbor as thyself. And he also said on these two things. Hang all the laws. And all the prophets. 
Those two things are more important than anything you're doing. Because if you don't love, you're going straight to hell when you die. If you are hating, I'm not talking about feelings right now. You're doing some things that shows how you feel. When somebody walks up to you and mention that person's name, you get, you get upset. Steam start coming out of your ears. When you see people coming, people can see you clenching up because you can't stand this person. If you got anything against a person, that is going to fester into hate if you don't let it go. You can't tell me you're a child of God, you're a woman of God, a man of God, and you got hate in your heart, hatred. Some people, they got hatred, but they call it righteous indignation. Because they hate cer certain people that commit certain sins. I can't stand you because you drink. I can't put up with you because you shoot, you shoot dope. There's some people, they hold ministry. Whenever you hear them preach, they talk about homosexuals, but they don't say nothing. When they dress their daughter up for prom and put in a split dress and a, with a back out and, and, and send her away with some dude that ain't thinking about nothing but fornication. But they don't care about that. But they care about this homosexual. Listen, you will be lost for that. Yes, homosexuality is wrong and sin. But all these other things are sin too. You got people watch, marching around City Hall talking about Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And then when they go home, they got a girlfriend and a boyfriend that they having sex with without being married. Loose here. You know that's wrong. Come on now. But God told us that we got to love each other. He told us that the law and the prophet hang on those things. All the laws and everything, the laws ain't just the, the, the Ten Commandments. The laws are anything and everything that God has put in his word and everything that proceeds out of his mouth to your ears. That's his commandment. Jesus said, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. You got to keep his commandment and his commandment is the main thing. Listen, if we put ourselves in the love of God, he told us one day, put yourself, keep yourself in the love of God. If we keep ourselves in the love of God, if we keep on doing what he told us to do, if we don't let hate and vitriol get into our spirit and in our hearts, if we keep ourselves in the love of God, if we walk around understanding that such for some of us, we were dead in trespasses and sin, if we look at the fact that through love and kindness he drew us by his spirit, when no eye pitied us, when we were in our own blood, I don't know about you, but I was in my own blood. I was sticking up needles in my arm and bleeding half to death on the floor. And God came along and saved me. What I look like hating somebody. And what do I look like downing somebody. And what do I look like castigating somebody for something that they doing when such was, some, was I. But God, God who is rich in mercy, where with his love, his great love, he loved me. When I was lost and turned out. He loved me when I was out there sticking up and stealing, when I was out there robbing, when I was out there taking advantage of young girls, when I was out there doing all types of things. One songwriter say, if it's a role, if it's a role of bondage and sin that you tried, so did I. But God. Yes, yeah, some of us are liars. Some of us were child abusers. Some of us were drunks and all those different things. But if it's, if it's a road of bondage and sin that you tried, so did I. But God, God is a keeper. God is a mind regulator. God is your strength. God will be your help. God will hold you up. God will pick you up when you fall. 
God will strengthen you. God will encourage you. God will give you a right mind. He said in the scripture, he said, listen, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. There ain't no hatred going into a, a, a person that's got power, love, and a sound mind. They don't have nothing evil to say about somebody when they got power, love, and in a, a sound mind. They don't care what people say about them when they got power, love, and a sound mind. They're not slandering folks. They're not going out to shoot folks. They're not carrying pistols and knives and bazookas and all those type of things trying to get back at somebody for something they did 100 years ago. They got power, love, and a sound mind. Mind. And that determines the way they walk. That determines the way they talk. That determines the way they live. Listen, it's a different when you live for God. You don't have to be bothered with that crazy stuff. You don't have to be bothered with those things that war against the mind. Because the scripture lets us know he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Listen, folks, you cannot make it hating. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I hope this word touches somebody. I hope this word delivers somebody. I hope someone receives this word. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they may be delivered from hate, envy, malice, and strife, and all those other things that put us against each other that put people against each other. Self-hatred. Lord, give us to walk in love and the power of love and the power of a sound mind. Lord, in Jesus' name, for your honor and praise, and I thank you right now. Thank God. Amen. Folks, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to try to drop in uh, a little bit uh, more than I usually do. Uh, and like I said, man, I hate to think about the music, but this troop still marches on, so we still got that. So in Jesus' name, those of you that are praying and those of you that are really seeking God, I'm asking you to pray for me. Those who uh, are still on the fence, I'm asking you to jump over on the lower side. So in Jesus' name, if God says the same, I'll be back. Thank you so much. Thank, thank for the comments. I'm, I'm going to share something with you, then I'm going to go. If you think I'm over here Superman, if you think I'm over here and I got it all together, I'm not talking about I'm a sinner, but I'm saying if you think I'm over here, you know, Samson before he got his hair cut, if you think all of that, uh, you mistaken. I had a situation that happened the other day. And some more situations came in on me, and I was feeling, I was feeling kind of down. And then, with the music thing happening, and some other things happening, a thought crept in my mind for a few minutes or a few seconds. He said, "Man, you ain't got time to be on no YouTube and all that type of stuff. You know, you getting ready pretty soon. You they you'll be on 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 your own. You won't even be working. Where you gonna get money from and all that type of stuff? You know, you need to be you need to be hustling. And so that and the fact that uh at the particular time God had not given me a message and I wanted one so I can have something to come. And I forgot that when that happens, you don't worry about it. You just go about it like. God told you, and he'll drop a message on you. And so, uh, but at the time, sometimes you get caught off guard by the tre the, tr the, the uh, uh, pressures of this world. And so I was going through doing some reviews of the videos and everything, and I saw three or four people that just said some encouraging words. And one brother or I believe it was a brother was talking about how he sat back and watched every video that I've done so far uh, in this series. I've been on YouTube for a little while, but just over the last few couple months, he said he sat there and watched six hours straight. And he said he's encouraged. His mind is made up to be saved. And man, let me tell you something. Whatever I was going through, it was gone after that. And then another person said that they had not drank beer in a whole week. 
And see, I say always celebrate the small accomplishment, especially when you know it's God because you could have never went that long without him. There's someone else to say, please keep preaching these messages because I'm delivered from sin. I'm being set free right now from sin. Man, do you know? Let me tell you something. It lifted my spirit. So keep the comments coming. You may disagree with something. I'll address it uh, if I feel like it's brought in the right spirit and it's not going to take away from those that are being blessed. But as I came forth in the beginning, this is not an argument. This is not an argument uh, channel. This is not a debate channel. Uh, this is not a get back at you channel. Uh, Elder Patillo, I was just looking at uh, Sister So and So channel, and she, your name came up, and she talked about you like a dog. Well, uh, that's between her and God, because I'm not getting ready to go over there and see, and I'm not going to respond to her. Why? Because you're not going to get me caught up in hate. I'm trying to make it. So with that being said, let me cut this off or oh, I'll keep talking. Peace.